is up everybody it is luis martinez here collaborator of the san diego latino film festival this time in its 27th year virtualized for your safety um obviously this is the time of year where we would be getting together at fashion valley drinking some free stella areolas talking to filmmakers and collaborating and doing live q a's with the audience after seeing a film like diaz de luz but instead, we have to do a virtual review. We have to do a virtual sit down, and it is incredible because I've gotten to talk to filmmakers from Argentina to Germany to today, um, Panama and Costa Rica. So I want to welcome in the two uh, co-directors of this film, Mauro Borges and Enrique Perez Him. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing great. Great. Thanks for the spot. Thanks for the invitation. I'm doing great. And thanks for everyone watching at home. Yeah, thank you. And everybody that's watching, if you have any questions about the festival or about this film in particular, I have a lot. So let's let's jump right into it. The first thing um, that struck me is that, you know, um, co-directors. So, you know, as a director myself, I know that 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 on that on movie sets, you know, Specifically, there always has to be one voice um, for a project like this that's so extensive, that's so 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 vast. How did you guys handle sort of um, teaming up for this? Whichever one of you guys wants to take it. Well, um, you know, at, at first, like we 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 started this project because we thought it would be like the easiest way to do it. You know, like teaming up and doing it with with a lot of crews a lot of directors and different producers in different uh, countries uh at, at, the, at the beginning of the process which which was in 2014 we we thought oh maybe it'd be easier if, if everyone just made a short film in, in each country and then we make it a feature but it turned out to be like a, a titanic task you know like getting everyone together and and getting everyone to to be like uh, on the same page on the movie we wanted to create, because ever since we we started the project, we knew we wanted it to be one film. There was there were gonna be different directors, different producers, different crews, but we wanted to make one film. We wanted to make this ensemble piece where stories would connect uh, uh, throughout the whole movie, and. Uh, and yeah, we thought uh, it would be it'd be like the synergy would make would would uh, would make the film, you know. But they like working from the distance and this before you know the pandemic and everything. We, we started working, you know, Mauro in Costa Rica, I in pa me in Panama, and other people in Nicaragua and in Guatemala, you know, and so on. Uh, you know, we. That we started to feel, you know, the distance and and working through Skype or working through, you know, the uh, video calls and stuff. Like that. It wasn't easy. It actually took, it made the process a lot longer. But uh, it was really interesting uh, to, you know, to connect and and co-create and um, you know, negotiate as well on the film we wanted to make. And, and we've, I feel that in the end, we succeeded in making one film, which was our great goal. No, we, because when I watched it, and, and, and I've been watching a lot of movies to prepare for the interviews and for the festival, when I watched it, I, I first thought it was uh, like a Guatemalan film or, or, or like a single country. Like I watched it and it feels like one movie filmed in one place by one film crew it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like like four separate entities so if that was your goal to bring those things together then you guys did an amazing job because i didn't even realize it because i was doing a little research about you guys but i didn't even realize until i saw the credits that you had a panama crew you had a nicaragua crew you had a guatemala crew you had a costa rica crew so for me that that's when so it, it was almost like a plot twist at the end where it was like surprise <laughs> this is actually a bunch of different movies put together or a bunch of different crews working together and and your credits are like zh, 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 zh. so yeah i can imagine i can imagine uh Ma so mother you you were handling the the, the stuff in, in in where or what how did you guys split up the work well, um, actually, what we did was that, um, well, Kiki and I were sort of the heads of the um, script um, of the whole of the whole movie, 
Uh, we had input from uh, inputs from every di director that was there. And what we did was that we set up um, we set up some guidelines for each one of the directors uh, so that at least in style, we, we wouldn't drift too far uh, from each other so that it would have a coherence at the end. So um, basically what we did was that we had a lot of talks with our, um, with our DP, we had a lot of talks with our um, assistant director and we had a lot of talks with our, our continuity director and they became, and our sound, um, and our sound um, director as well. And they became our, our eyes and ears in terms of what we wanted to achieve. And uh, Kiki and I were constantly talking uh, about how we wanted this movie to feel, and especially with the timing of the movie, um, because that's a really difficult thing to do if you're not on set and you're not looking at what everyone else is doing. You just have to go by what the crew that was in the previous productions uh, can tell you. Like, oh, this thing, you know, they shot it like this and this. And, and we had to, like, go on the fly a little bit. Um, of course, we had everything. Um, so you, you guys shot everything with the same camera, same sort of tech, technical stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. We had uh, the, the RDP went, uh, went country to country uh, along okay. with the AD and with the sound uh, director and our continuity director. Where did the story originate? Because it is, it is basically kind of, you know, it's, it's got so many different elements. It's got religious elements. It's got, you know, prophets, false prophets. It's got, it's got, uh, you know, like uh, bringing different worlds together into it. But it also seems like it's one of those, uh, you know, some of all fears, like a fear of something that could happen. Is this, similar to something that happened uh an event that happened in real life is this something that you guys came up with together or where did the genesis of uh, of the story come from well uh we uh, well we we the genesis of the project is we wanted to make a collective a uh, project we wanted to make a, a a movie that could happen in all six countries at the same time uh, and and we all knew each other like I knew Mauro from before, and I, 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 we we had built a, a solid network of of Central American producers. We've met in different festivals and different events. So like after me, after you know, um, jo uh, uh, being building this network, we we decided you know we can actually make a movie together. So so that's how it started. It didn't actually begin from began from the story. It began from the from this uh, need to actually or this. So the the team the team came first before the looks like Enrique got frozen a little bit there. So yeah, yeah. just to uh, just to complement what he was saying. Yeah, the uh, the thing is we were watching each other at you know uh, uh, local festivals. We knew each other from movies from things we liked and uh, it just came naturally the the question of hey since you're doing this and i'm doing this why don't we just get together and do something else and that began to snowball into uh bringing up all types of producers and creative people into the project so so as opposed to the idea germinating in somebody's brain and then reaching out to people to make it happen you guys built the team or had the idea of what the team for the project would be and uh so you did you flipped it you, you you did the reverse the reverse but it came out it came out incredible um Thank the cinema the cinematography i mean uh, i mean i'm i'm uh, i'm a neighbor so i'm from colombia so i'm familiar with the landscapes of south america but you know uh, central america is such a beautiful place that the 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 shot of the um, the abuelita and the little boy crossing the street with the church in front of them and like i don't know if that yeah. was a golden hour i don't know if that was a golden hour shot but but i was like 
I paused it on the screen and I was like, oh my God, the composition on this shot is incredible. So, you know, did, did, how, how hard did you guys work on, on the aesthetic, on, on, the, on the feel and the look of it? Well, that um, was, that was, uh, oh, go ahead, Maru. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just, just a little bit. And yeah, okay, I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna give it over to Kike, okay? Uh, we did some research before, uh, but um, since we were shooting all over the place because we had to shoot, we had a really tight schedule for shooting this movie. We had about five to four days in each country to finish each one of the stories. So we did have a, a rather robust set of uh, references of what we wanted to achieve. But um, our DP was great and he really, really stuck it out, his neck out for us because he was working with minimal equipment and he had a, a great empathy for the light and the circumstances of what exactly what was going on uh other than what we had planned so he really does have a nice set of eyes wow uh, yeah and Kiki, you were gonna say something uh, yes uh yeah before early earlier before like i i i mentioned uh, the word of negotiation like uh, i think that was very interesting in this project because since we all were like on the same page of wanting to make one film not a bunch of short films like put together. We wanted to make it look like one film. We had a lot of negotiation between the directors about what kind of compositions we were going to use for what uh, segment of the movie, if you know, like handheld versus not handheld or stuff like that. And and we had to like really like set aside our own personal styles as, as film directors and actually uh, like. Uh, decide on what would be best for the film and we made like some rules that we all decided to follow so like in uh, all the different aesthetic decisions would a uh, narrative would make sense in the different segments of the film like for instance like the first i don't know 20 minutes 25 minutes there was a, a like a, a rule for those 21st 20, 20 25 minutes you know then in the second act we could do something else and, and and i don't remember specifically what was the uh, the playbook but we had a playbook for 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 that kind of for you had a bible you had a bible so to speak for the movie exactly like for, yeah like you would for a tv yeah. show that had multiple exactly directors. something like that something like okay. that yeah okay we got a couple of comments here mr ethan always checking in to make sure i'm doing my job right says thank you enrique and mauro for your movie Thank you, Enrique, again, for hosting the festival. As always, 27 years strong. And then we have a comment here from Caro Hernandez. Saludos, chicos. Saludos, Caro. She's, Caro. A producer. She's a producer of Days of Light. There you go. Um, yeah. Another thing that that came me chocon, like that 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 hit me about the movie is just the the talent of the child actors that you had. You know how. I mean, I, I, I have difficulty casting a movie in one city. I can't imagine casting a movie in six countries uh, for a tight window like that. How how was that process? How, how, how deeply were you guys involved with it? Or did you sort of leave some of that to some of the on-the-ground producers? Um, well, the, actually, the casting for each one of the movies was done by each one of our production crews in each city because it would be suicide to try to control a process <laughs> like that yeah yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. too big and uh it it, it we were they mostly did you did you get any like were there any non-actors cast or or did you get or was everybody pretty much a professional no there was it was a mix it was a mix it was a mix yeah it's always a mix down here around here you know no. it's mix. <laughs> but you but you no, find no, but you find so i mean some incredible talent those kids did an amazing job you know i i love to work with uh, like here in panama we don't have like a, a a long film tradition there's more a theater tradition so we have a lot of uh more theater actors than film actors so but personally i like to work with 
people that come from theater because they have a discipline and then you have this challenge to actually help them, you know, uh, work better for film. But in, in, the, in the case of the Panama segment, two main characters, one was uh, a, a, like a, a long standing like um, theater actress, uh, Cloti Luna, she's been in every like a major uh, theater uh, performance here in, in Panama. And the other one was Sinit Galvez. She she's like not a theater actor, but actress. She's she she's working short films and she's she, she she but she's more from experience, you know. And it was a a, a really interesting combination. In the uh, there's a funny story about the about the children uh, of the children actors because uh, Mauro and I who which were involved more in in the in the screenwriting process. When Julio Lopez, the director, told us he wanted to have like a, a child protagonist, we both were like, "Oh, you sure about that? Like, it's, we only have four days to shoot, you know? It's a casting, and 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 we were like, from our screen pre- screenwriting perspective, we, we were telling him like, you know, we could actually make this story work with an older character or stuff like that, and he was really persistent." What would happen if you shot with a really small child and in a such a tight schedule? But he pulled it off, and it was—it's really—it's a really like over. Uh, it's a—it's a nice story. It's a pretty story, in the end. No, I, 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 I commiserate with you because I love working with theater <laughs> actors. Because if anything, all you have to do is tell them to lower their voice a little bit. They yeah. always hit. They always hit their mark. They're good at remembering their lines. They're off book quickly. They're they they I. Some of the some of the some of the best uh, actors that I've ever had come from the theater and transition over to film. Um, but I mean, sure. just the logistics alone uh, of that are like, what was the what was the editing process like? I mean, how are you moving all this footage from six different countries into one editing bay? Slowly. <laughs> uh, slowly. <laughs> yeah, it took its time. Uh, it's it, it the well, actually, the first. I think what we got from I I believe was the fourth cut, something like that. Um, it took off, but the first, you know, when you're watching the first cut of your film, it's always something rough, and if you have seven other voices, you know, waiting for you and talking and giving their opinions at some point uh she's got to say okay let's stop and let's prioritize what do we want here what is really working and what are personal opinions that we think are not um really contributing to the uh, whole of the movie because that's what's what we're about the 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 film has to come out and it has to come out uh in the best way possible. So let's focus on that instead of what we could have done and how we can save an individual scene. Uh, let's talk about the whole movie and how that works. And I think about the, uh, I think it was about the, uh, we were probably about four months into edit- editing when we reached that point because it was a little bit going back and forth between all of us, you know, because uh we all wanted to to um get a little bit of more screen time to our story or maybe improve this in our story or you know but that comes up with a price it comes with the price of the other stories and it ultimately comes with the price of the movie not being as good so when we reach that point i think uh and i think that kika here can uh um uh help me out with this i think uh when when we had that things really went along uh smoothly and kike also got a great element into the film which was the music uh and uh, him along with isabella panama's producer uh got us in touch with the um rhythm of the whole movie 
I was I was about to say if you if you if you're in the editing third or fourth cut and <clears throat> you know you're you're directing one part of the movie and you have a feeling that that this scene should be kept in versus another scene and then the other director that that directed the other scene says no I think this scene and every everybody has valid points um did you guys go to like an independent person to make a final decision did it never come down to a point like that you know where did did it some, did somebody give at any point like you know, did you guys have any of the, any of that friction in uh, Kika? Yes, I, I think there was friction, definitely. Like the whole the whole editing process took about nine months. Like it was really long, and it was it was really long, mo 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 mostly because we had to give all this feedback all the time. Like there was one editor, the, the movie got edited in Argentina, uh, with an editor called Cesar Custodio. He did a great job. He was working by him, like he was. We all, we always knew there was going to be one editor, and he was he would be calling the shots during that process. But you know, once he would give he would give us a cut, then we, we all we all would see it. We'll make a Skype uh, session of twelve people, like six directors, six producers, and you know we will back and forth. Like I like this, this and that, or that, and uh, and that would take I don't know, like two weeks, or before we could actually get. A, a solid feedback for the editor like you we will have a like, the, you wouldn't the, have the uh, editor in that conversation because he would be overwhelmed with all the things no, coming no, to exactly, him right? you guys exactly. you guys would talk together we, we had to unite a, 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 a one solid feedback and that would take time uh, it, it took some that's what that's what took more time because we it's not that we were not uh, agreeing but as Mauro just said like there were six directors involved, you know, six egos, <laughs> uh, filmmaking egos, you know, like, and at, at the beginning it was like, I, I don't want to sacrifice this. I like this shot. I like what the actress did in this, that, and what, and you know, it's like, if, if, if that usually happens with one director and it's usually a dialogue between the director and the editor and the producer, this was like multiplied by six. It took time. It took time to actually reach agreements on every cut, not just on the first cut. On every cut, we had to go again through the same process, you know, like actually uh, uh, make a meeting, uh, transcribe what, the, what was in the meeting, and actually like build a, a, a document, a sheet that we can actually give to the editor so it'd be clear for him to what he would have to work on for the next cut. So yeah, it was, it was overwhelming. <laughs> It's it sounds like the definition of too many cooks, but somehow somehow you came up with a delicious meal at the end because like I said, um I enjoy the process of watching a movie without knowing anything about it. So, you know, when Moises and Juan tell me we want you to do the QA from the, for this movie, here's here's a link, and I just hit play. I don't I don't look at anything else, I just let the movie take me in. And from my perspective, I could not, and I've watched every movie ever pretty much. Um, but from my perspective, I didn't sense, like it didn't feel like four rooms, you know, it didn't feel like something yeah. like that where you, where you feel different dir director style. It didn't feel, it didn't feel like, like uh, justice league where one director started it, one finished it. It didn't feel like that. It felt like one cohesive movie. I think at the start of the movie, I felt that I was waiting for the stories to intersect. So it was such, it was such so cohesive that at the beginning of the movie, I kept thinking, okay, maybe this guy is her dad or they're related, you know, something like that. I kept, and then eventually it sort of dawns on you that you're watching these independent storylines. So, so, so kudos, you know, to you guys, uh, you know, you, very, you. very good job. Like, let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's good to hear that. It's good to hear that because that's what we were we were aiming to, like you know, actually making one movie. <laughs> no, yeah, no. And then I saw at the and then I saw that it was okay. You're gonna do the Q and A with two directors. I was two directors. I was like, I can bend, I, I can. I can barely stand working with myself. I couldn't work with another director. That's, that's too many big heads in the room like that. I can't do that. But maybe the fact that you were like separated and, and stuff like that. Um, 
I want to ask you guys just kind of what makes you tick as a filmmaker. This is is for both of you. Let's start with Mauro. Did you always know that you wanted to? Is this because you know? I, I like I feel like ever since I was a little kid, I've walked around with these ideas about scenes of movies and stories I wanted to tell in my head, just playing over and over. I've always felt that I wanted to tell stories. Did is that something that was inside of you from from the beginning, or did you fall in love with filmmaking like later on? How did you get there? No, oh, absolutely. I I, I was I. Uh... I've always been big into movies. I've always been big into going the movie experience, you know, going into the dark room and sitting and watching the movie and let it, letting it take you somewhere else, you know, into the mind of someone. That for me is something that is great. But I got to say, as I've been working on this and especially with this movie, uh, I found that the other thing that really fascinates me about movies is working with uh, so many talented people. I mean, uh, Diaz de Luz, uh, you can like it, you can dislike it, whatever, but the process, just the process of sitting down with each and every one and getting into, into their heads, what their mind space is, what they're thinking, that really gets me going and it cranks up my juices as well, you know, just just to be in the presence of, of, of so many creative people like uh, Kike, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so, uh, same here, Mauro. It was great to work with you, you, all, you, all you guys. And, you know, going back to your, your question, uh, Luis, like I, same as Mauro, like I, more than uh, knowing that oh, I wanted to be a filmmaker or anything, I've always been like, a, what do you call that in English? A film buff, mm -hmm. cinephilo. cinephilo. I always, I always uh, enjoyed a good film since uh, since I was a little kid. And I don't know, there was like a, this turning point when I was like 14, 15, that when I actually realized that people made films, you know, like there were people behind the product. And I was like, oh man, people actually make films. I, so I could actually, maybe I, this is what I could do because like, I like watching films, so maybe I could make films. So yeah, I started, you know, you're like 15, 16 and people are all, 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 are all over you. Like, what are you gonna do once you like, and you finish high school, what are you gonna be, like, what do you want? And I'm like, maybe I'll be a filmmaker. And, and people like here in Panama, like, back then like i don't know yeah. 20 years ago like 15 years ago it was like you know there's no film in panama what are you gonna do like it's just crazy it's a crazy idea but you know you're 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 a teenager and you're not thinking of like the market or what's the what's the most uh rent rentable like um job profitable. position profitable position in the market or in, you're not thinking about any of that and you're like i'm just i'll just be a filmmaker <laughs> now like 15 years later i'm like okay man it's, uh, it, that was a tough decision i, I should have taken it more seriously but you know i'm already here and i'm, I'm actually enjoying it <laughs> what was what was the first movie uh kiki that you were obsessed about when you were a kid what was one of the first movies you were really like you wanted to watch over and over Oh, uh, you remember this movie called Point Break with Patrick Swayze yeah. and Keanu Reeves? Make it two, Utah. <laughs> make, it, make it two. <laughs> yeah, I've, of course. I've seen, I, I saw that movie like uh, like 10 times or oh, 20 times when I was a kid. Okay. Uh, what about yeah. you, Moto? I've I seen it. The first, the, the first movie I became obsessed with was Back to the Future. Okay. That was my number one movie. I, would, I had it. I had recorded it from uh, from one time they were playing it in one of the national networks here, and I would just put it, you know, run it over, and then just rewind and watch it again. And I knew I was I knew all the dialogue. Obviously, we've all been dealing with this pandemic for the last several months. So, have you guys? Did you guys get a chance to? Obviously, it would have been great to have you guys in San Diego to to watch it in front of a live audience. But did you guys get to have that experience? Uh, when when did the, did you guys premiere it before a live audience, or have you had to do everything virtually so far? 
virtually Zoom. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I I came this close to watching it here in Panama. There's like the there's a Panama Film Festival here in March, mm -hmm. and I was like a week, like I, there was, I was gonna like like it was gonna be on the 27th of March. I was I was gonna see it with a live audience, and the lockdown came on on the 20th or something like that. Yeah, that's one of the the problems with this festival is that it it's yeah. it, it was it was the day before the festival was supposed to start, and all of a sudden it was like. Things were just up in the air. It was so crazy, and and here we are, like six months later. But I think I, I, at least the uh, the audience um, gets this. Have you guys gotten a lot of re, uh, response from film festival? How many have you gotten into? What other places have, have you guys uh, been able to be accepted in? Um, yes. It... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Mauro. You went to the first one, actually, right? You, yeah, you we there, are, right? yeah, we we premiered. Uh, I was able to be in the premiere of the movie. Uh, it was on the um, AFI uh, Latino Fest. Uh, it was on uh, Washington DC. Uh, that was on October of last year. So that was like the first one, and then we had the whole route planned for this year. And actually, the second uh, I we it, it screened at Icaro, uh, and we won a couple of awards there. And then it was going to go to Panama and Costa Rica as well. But it did, okay. it did screen in Panama, but virtually. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Panama, like they shifted to virtual mode like really fast, and it it did screen there and i think this month is the chicago also right because we're in chicago mm -hmm. as well yeah yes so, yeah excellent um well the um, my next question for you guys uh well actually we have a comment coming in here uh from manuel duran uh saludos a mauro <laughs> um but uh what a, what kind of response have you gotten from because i mean I mean, I, I, I consider myself somebody that knows a lot about, uh, you know, film, but I don't know enough about Central American film. You know, um, do you have you gotten a, res a response from other filmmakers, like you said, that might not think that filmmaking is a career possibility in, in Panama? Or have you have you gotten any response from younger filmmakers, from established filmmakers? What you know, other than the festival circuit, what has been the, 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 the response to, to the movie? Uh, okay well well it's it's uh, it's uh, from like i i always value a lot the response of uh, of the audience of people who actually just go there like you just said i don't know anything about the film i'm just gonna go watch watch a film and i've got, i've had the opportunity to actually talk to people here in panama that that just you know they 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 went into the the screener for for the film festival here in Panama, and and people, uh, it's very, it's really rewarding that people uh, like that are are really like uh, enthusiastic about the film, and they they really like uh, like the idea of you know watching a, a story that takes place in all these different countries, and 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 it's it's surprising also. To, you know, when it's surprising and rewarding at the same time when people actually look at details that you you yourself don't don't really like put much thought into it. You know, and I've had a lot of that uh, from the people from people that 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 seen the film. Also, with the whole thing, the pandemic thing, a lot of people are relating it to it. Like, oh man, you like this is like what we're yeah. going through. You know, and. Yeah. And and it's and it's like it, you know we didn't plan that we didn't plan the pandemic or anything but it's like people are really relating it to it and it's interesting that I I got a comment once that it's like oh yeah we should take um, advantage of the crisis so we can build a new community or whatever I don't know it got all you know they got all these messages from it I'm like oh it's interesting. Well, a lot of the times you don't know you don't yeah. know the themes of the movie that you're okay. writing until it's out there, you know. And once you yeah, once you created yeah. it, it's it's almost no longer yours. It's people. It's you know. Yeah. It's out. 
it's out in the universe. Um, Mauro, did you, um, when, when you, it, it, from your, from your point of view of the writing process, um, because obviously there's, there's, there's themes of like love and poetry. There's, 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 there's the mother son relationship. There's the coming of age story. There's a religious story. Did, I, you know, did you, when you were writing them, did you, when you guys were writing them or collaborating on them, did you try to, even though they're not connected, sort of look for similar themes or was, was everything just sort of, or did you, or did you have more input from the production teams on in each country as to what the story was going to be? How did that work? Uh, actually, uh, the way it worked was that each one of the uh, directors had an idea of what they wanted to shoot. Um, some of them had them had the idea a little bit more elaborated. Some of them had bake a big concept of the story they wanted to do. Um, so basically, our job uh, became like fitting the pieces the pieces on the puzzle because what we did was that very early on on the uh, writing stage we said, okay, so this is a story that's gonna take place in five days, you know, and everything has to take place between those five days. And um, and we have the um, the event that happens in the yeah. movie, you know, I don't wanna right. or, 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 like spoil it, but you know, at the third day something happens. And um, that was like really like, this event is going to be is going to unify them all at least in that they're all witnessing it but in terms of um themes we wanted to um we wanted each one of them to have their own voice you know because the sensibilities that for example uh our um uh gloria has uh our director from Nicaragua are pretty different from the sensibilities I might have or the themes that I'm able to explore or want to explore. So that became like, um, okay, let's see how we can fit this all in and still make it feel like it's the same movie, you know, not five. You people. basically said, you know, this is the premise. This is what happens at the start of the movie. And then this many pages in, this happens. So they all have to witness this. And then this happens at the end, right? It's you sort of gave them it, like a not necessarily like a paint by numbers, but like a like a like a like a little bit of, of structure. You can put your idea as long as it fits into these themes and what you said earlier, which is and the first few minutes of the movie need to be shot in this way. And then yeah. you can you can get more creative. Okay, so that's yeah. kind of. So did any of the directors sort of fight you back on that? Like you said, the negotiations, you know, uh, about well, like well, I really think that if if you let me do like a a three sixty one shot for the for opening minute, then I might be able. Then it's gonna you know right like something like that. Well, yeah. that was that the, the the fighting back was the negotiation, I guess. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, a, that, that, that's the that's the nicest way you could possibly yeah. describe that as, in a film set is. Yeah, we were, yeah, yeah. We were negotiating the situation. <laughs> yeah, we were, and, and and still, I uh, actually after after it was shot, when we were looking at the dailies mm -hmm. and and looking at the uh, at the editing process, we still saw stuff like, oh man, this guy used the crane shot. We were nobody was gonna use the crane shot, and, and somebody used the crane shot. I was like, "Why did he use a crane shot if we agreed that there was no gonna be any crane shots?" And the crane shot stayed in the cut, by the way. Yeah, yeah, because you're like, but you know, all that being said, that's an amazing crane shot, though. Right? Uh, <laughs> there's uh, there's a lot the um, the the there's a lot of stuff about like because one of the things that i found interesting is this happens and it's almost like you know at first the richest segments of society are not affected by it immediately because of their richness and then you see that the other theoretically poor segments of society are not really affected at all by this event you know yeah and, and then and then you then 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 
then people's richness in this in this situation starts working against them. I thought that was an incredibly clever sort of uh, point to that story. Is that something that you guys consciously wanted to get across? Well, I guess it 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 it, it, it kind of worked it worked itself out. I, I think you're talking about specifically like the contrast between Guatemala and Panama in this case. Uh, yeah, yeah, the people that are up in the mountains yeah. that 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 are, are they're almost like it's it doesn't really change that much about their lives in a day to day matter. Where there's somebody that's supposedly living like a yeah. very high life is is affected more. Yeah, I, I, it kind of worked itself out because what, as as Mauro was saying, like uh, Sergio, the Guatemalan director, he's more into 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 this kind of uh, stories of uh, about people like uh, Maya Kiche stories of uh, 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 people in the in the rural areas of Guatemala, and I'm more into into uh, into the urban stories of like Panama City. I've like most of my of, of, of my previous films being urban stories. I, I I kind of like I'm kind of in love with my city, and I, I like the, its contradictions. So I wanted to work with what the contradictions of my city, and you know, like in Panama City has those these big skyscrapers, and I was like, okay, what happens if they the power Burns out, they can't go down the elevator, you know, from the 17th floor or something. So I started working out from there, and and Sergio, uh, by, uh, by himself, started working it out from from what he wanted to tell, and it kind of all this contrast started to like appear. And I think Mauro did a great job afterwards because uh, most of of the directors all they gave was like a synopsis. And uh, and Maru then had the, the, the had to do the work of the dialogue and a character character building. I think Maru did a great job uh, giving life to the characters, and I think uh, that life that Maru gave to the characters actually helped out with those contradictions that you're mentioning. Wow! So not only did you guys give the individual filmmakers a rule, a bible, and some very specific mm. points to work in in the script. But then they turn around and say, okay, here's the story that I wrote based on that with the actors that I have cast or that I want to use. Mm. So basically then they're turning it back around on you, Mauro, and telling you, okay, now you put it back together again. So it's almost like you're going back and forth. and Right? Is that? Yes. I love, basically. I love back and forth. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> I remember... Don't, I remember like the, I, I think it was like a month before shooting began that we were really into pre-production and I was having this long Skype conversations with, with Kike, you know, just making sure that the, the puzzle fit, you know, like, okay, yeah. so we got yeah. this and we got to cut this here and we got to make sure and, you know, long nights, but uh, it when you see it on the screen, it really pays off. So, yeah, I am. I am fascinated by everything that I'm learning about this movie and how it came together. You know, so, you know, so I'm very glad that I got to see it without any preconceived notions or like if he would have told me, you know, these six directors and six different companies came together and they jointly wrote a script and put a movie together and it all looks the same. And, and here you go, watch it. I would have been like, uh, what? And so I think that would have tainted how I watched it, you know, whereas seeing it as a, you know, in, in a very pure state of mind, I think really helped me, uh, help me. Again. So again, uh, my kudos to you. We have another comment here from somebody watching Paul Art. Very amazing lineup. Thank you for watching Paul Art. Um, but, you know, what, uh, what, um, what do you think that the, the next step for you guys as filmmakers in after that, are you going to try to take on another project of this size? Or are you going to go back to doing your individual work from now? Do you feel that this is sustainable as a filmmaking model? Kika? I would love to try it again, actually. Uh, right now, you know, if you told me back in 2014 when we started this project that we would, we would be uh, end, uh, like releasing it on 2020 like i probably would have not gone wow. through it you know because you know like filmmaking takes time if it, like indie filmmaking and it, especially in our countries it takes time we know that and we're okay with it but for by now we we realized it takes time but i didn't i never thought it would take to take six years and you know like that's 
before taking on a project like this, like uh, again, I would like, I, like I would consider it. But I think it's an interesting experiment, and if I would do it again, I would try to do it again with with, with uh, colleagues or, or fellow directors that if we are in, on the same city or in the same country at least. I think, <laughs> it, yeah, that's the thing. I think I, I think that the, the feedback everybody that they needs to move to Panama. Yeah, or, some, or or you know, I think the feedback and the negotiating we're talking about actually, it was really like it was what took most of the time. You know, like being. It would have been easier if you could have. It, it would have been easier if you could have had those meetings face to face to where you it know, would be fast. It would have been yeah. faster, I think. Yeah, yeah. And I I I think it it be I I would recommend the model. Uh, he, he, uh, and try to do a film th with the same model, but try to be in the same country this time. Like I think it'd be more efficient, and I think it, I think it'd be an uh, interesting process. Está bien, está bien. All mm -hmm. right, we got another comment here from Ivan. Hola amigos, I think this is one of the few experiences of collective creation in Latin American film history story. I'm send uh, my film students to watch it. Good. Could you share a top three ideas or tips for new directors who want to take a similar process and survive? Well, number one, do it in the same country. That way, if you have an <laughs> argument, that way, that way, if you're negotiating, you know, and somebody doesn't like what you're doing, you can punch them in the face. No, just kidding. Or are, are you uh, going go to go, go out for some beers afterwards? Yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah. Create yeah. and be more creative. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I think if you had some medicinal and you know some beers, yeah. you know, it would have made the collaborative yeah. process a little bit easier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely, <laughs> definitely. But but what what um. I mean, that's an interesting question because I always say that as a filmmaker, your first three movies are probably going to suck or you're going to be able to learn a lot. I mean, like the first time you pick up a camera and you try to make something and finish something, it's very hard to make your first movie. Some people do it, but to make your first film like an award winning short, it, you're, you're usually going to get that. But if you could go back to, you know, day one shot one of your first project and give yourself advice uh, as a filmmaker from what you've learned on your journey what what would you uh, what would you tell yourself moto hmm. embrace the limitations that'll be number one don't try to fight it you know just use it uh i yeah. think for this project the that was definitely one of the if not the most valuable lesson was that you're not going to get you don't have the time to do it as you want to do it. You don't have the resources to do it as you want to do it. So how can you do it and still be happy with the result? You know? Steer into the curve. Yeah, completely. Completely. Yeah. What about you? What would you That's tell? What would you great advice? <laughs> what would you tell yourself if you were uh, if you if you could go back to because I think that's you know, day one shot one, your first movie. You get five minutes think, with yourself. What do you tell yourself? I think I would tell my like I would tell my past self I would tell like to be more patient. Yeah. It's gonna take it's gonna take time. It's gonna take time, and you have to embrace it and embrace that process. Because I think back then, like if I look at myself ten years ago, I'd be I, I was like I'm gonna make I I'm gonna make ten films in ten years. You know, it's like <laughs> one, you know, it's like wow. one after the other. You know, it's like oh, craziness, no. craziness. A lot of ideas coming through my head, and you just wanna like put them into paper and put them into the screen. And it's like, hey, I I, I would tell myself, you know choose wisely what you want to work on and um and put a lot of energy into it you don't have uh, you don't have to make 10 films you could do three or four and 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 make and you know love them and and caress them and you know <laughs> give them the not the, the, the love they need to become a good film you know that's probably you know, what i would tell myself you know what i would tell myself what would you tell yourself <laughs> buy bitcoin <laughs> well, let's not let's not let's not go into the finance financial issue of filmmaking. Because if I could if I could if I could tell myself 10, 15 years ago to buy Bitcoin, I could make any movie I wanted to right now. True, Not even. True. Good point. Good point. Yeah. No, I think I I think that that's true because you know when I when I before I became a director, people would tell me, yeah, I've been working on this film for like two years, or I've been working on this project for like three years, and I'd be like, what, why? And then you know, yeah. it took me a 
it took me a year and a half to do my first feature and a year to do my second feature. And I still, I'm still working on films that I, that I shot in like 2016 that, it, that I just couldn't get right. You know, that I'm still sort of tweaking and working because I don't like to put work out there unless, you know, I'm happy with it. Um, but on a film like this, because a painting is never finished, you just stop working on it. So I can imagine the editing process for something like this. At one point, at what point did you sort of did you sort of say, okay, this it's enough tinkering, it's enough, it, it it's ready? Like what when did you reach that point? Or when did you know? I think we all had different points <laughs> in this. So movie. some of you guys were like, it's ready now, we're done, yeah. let's get it going. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, for, it definitely happened. Yeah. Happened. <laughs> Keep going. I gotta take this call. Keep going. Yeah. Oh, for me, uh I would say like um I would say like it was like the six or seven cut or something like that. We were yeah still cutting doing some things but there wasn't like a much uh, like a different improvement between one of the other sure you, you can get you can get real um uh you can get real picky with what you're doing but uh at, at that point it was like okay let's move on let's do color let's let's put on the music let's finish this up because uh we can keep going I, I know people who have been going on with their projects for two, three years after they're done filming, just you know, trying to get it uh, because they don't they believe they don't have it right. So, uh, yeah. So, so sorry about that. I had a I had to take I had to take that call, but I was paying attention. Uh, Enrique, what what about you? What 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 were you, what was your thoughts uh, at at the at how to get to that end product for you? I, I mean, and I think that that the, that that like you said, bringing in because once you start with the music, then you feel like you feel like an attachment to the pacing and the music, right? That that for me, that's well, that's when I'm starting off. Now that right. you mentioned the the music, like that was when I like I started like really like, I I, I felt for a moment that I was really worn out from the editing process because it took a it took a while, it took a couple like nine months really, and and I was like really worn out. You know, you reach that point when you watch the film like over twenty times and like oh man, I don't know what to think of this film anymore because I've been watching it for nine months. But once we got work to work with Rodrigo. Rodrigo Dennis is a music composer for film here in Panama. And he works actually more for, 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 for California than Panama. He works from distance, but he, he lives here. And we started like, I, we contacted him and he said, we got a Panamanian film. Do you want to work on it? And he's like, yeah, sure. I want to work here in Panama. So he was really enthusiastic about it. And we started working with him. And when he started uh, laying down like the, the first, like, um, uh, pr proposals for uh, music i'm like oh this is actually becoming a film it's, it's, it has music now and it has a score and actually this is the first time i actually work with a score like i've worked with uh different like pre-recorded music in, on, in my previous films but this, this was like uh like we actually started working on the score for the film you know on every like putting like on the on every scene like just it's gonna have this it's gonna have that it was really well thought of by rodrigo and and that was when i actually like started to like gain you know go go back into the process with a lot more enthusiasm you know after being like worn out from the editing process it's like okay we gotta keep on working with this and it's actually becoming a solid film now like the music process was really important for me as, as for my own personal process, you know, like after being, you know, a little bit tired of the film, then you see it with music and it's like, oh man, this is a good film. You know, this is like, we are work, we're doing something good. <laughs> no, I think by the time <clears throat> I'm finished with every process, I've watched the movie at least 500 yeah. to a thousand times. And it's, it's, and it's, it's weird how you can make a cut that's like eight minutes in but you still go back and watch it from the beginning again, just so you can see how it works with the rest of the movie. Like you just, you know, even though it's a cut over here, you're like, yeah, yeah, but yeah I gotta yeah. watch the, I gotta watch the whole thing to make sure that 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 it works, right? So you know, it's 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 an obsessive trait. 
Um, one of the books that I read when I was a young filmmaker that really stuck in my head was uh, The Collaborative Art of Filmmaking, which uh, which was a book about um, um, just the different levels of filmmaking. They basically did an interview with a lot of people from Dead Poet Society, the Robin Williams movie, uh, yeah. from the director to the writer to the actors to the technicians to the sound people to the music, and they just... It was just basically like a documentary and a book about the process of making that movie. And it really stuck with me my whole life about allowing film to be a collaborative art. Um, and I think more than any film that I have seen at this year's festival, your movie embodies that, that theme of film as a collaborative art. And as I've said before, one of the reasons I love uh, doing these Q and A's and I'm always helping the festival out is because it gives me a chance to, to kind of see what my competition is doing. Now, what other filmmakers <laughs> are doing, and it really humbles me as a filmmaker to see the talent, the Latino talent, the talent in Central America that, you know, that I'm becoming more aware of uh, that is out there. So. Again, uh, as as a as a lover of film, as a Latino filmmaker, I want to you know let you guys know that, you know how I felt about your movie, and uh, so thank you for bringing it to the thank you for bringing it to the festival, and thanks for taking the time to talk to me today. Thank you, thank you, thank you for, for for giving us this opportunity to share. Okay, it's been a pleasure, right. really. Y ahora eh, un mensaje en español para para la familia latina. ¿Qué qué es lo que quieren que que que, que salgan cuando salgan del teatro, cuando apaguen su laptop después de ver esta película? ¿Qué le cuál es el mensaje que ustedes quieren que 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 los latinos salgan eh, de, de, de después de ver su película, Mauro? Yo lo que quiero es que la disfruten. <risa> quiero que salgan con con la sensación de haber pasado una hora y media en el cine sin pensar en qué es lo que está allá afuera. Lo que está allá afuera siempre va a estar esperando, pero solamente que estén en ese momento ahí disfrutando la película para mí es más que suficiente. Quique. Bueno, yo creo que me adscribo a la, a la intención original de la película que era, yo creo que, pienso yo y creo que compartimos todos los que estamos en el proyecto, que es borrar las fronteras. Básicamente de que quien vea la película sienta que en verdad estamos viviendo en un solo mundo, sin, sin toda esta ficción de los estados-nación que nos separan específicamente en, en el Istmo Centroamericano, que es un pedazo de tierra tan pequeño si lo comparas con otras regiones y somos seis países con diferentes culturas, con diferentes visiones y todo eso, pero pero yo creo que la película busca crear un sentimiento de unidad, de solidaridad, y me gustaría que la gente cuando salga de ver la película, pues entienda eso y se lleve ese sentimiento para su comunidad, básicamente. Porque la única manera, para cerrarlo, la única manera que tú te podías dar cuenta es que tengas una, una, un entendimiento muy específico de la diferencia entre los, los, el acento guatemalteco y el acento panameño y el acento Exacto. costarricense. Porque solamente, solamente en esos momentos donde decían reales o decían pan, esto, lo otro, donde, you know, yo soy colombiano, uruguayo y vivo en San Diego, o sea que me, me parezco más a un mexicano, ¿no? Pero... Uh -huh. pero pero yo puedo distinguir los, los, los dialectos de Sudamérica bien, pero los, los de Centroamérica no. Entonces, si una persona como yo puede ver una película entera y no, no darse cuenta de, 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 de qué tan diferentes son las diferentes escenas, creo que es muy fácil para una audiencia de, 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 de capturar ese mensaje. All right, thank you everybody for thank you everybody for watching uh this has been a q a about the movie dias de luz um i'm not sure if it's playing again but there's a lot of great movies playing at the festival this year thank you again mauro thank you again kike from costa thank rica you, Panama. Luis. thank you luis thank you luis thank you luis uh it's been a pleasure talking to you guys make sure that you guys uh where can they follow you can, can they follow you guys anywhere do you guys have a the production companies that that people can follow you or instagram or facebook Yeah, we have the uh, Days of Light, oh, Días de Luz en, en Instagram. Días de Luz, la película, ¿no, Maro? Y en Facebook, sí, también. Uh, y, en IMDb Luz, está como, y en IMDb está como Days of Light, ¿no? Days of Light y también uh -huh. nuestra 
distribuidora este, tiene la película, la distribuidora se llama Aural Films, ¿verdad? Aural Films, sí. Astral, Aural, Aural. Aural, 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 Aural Films. Films. Okay. Aural y un Films. último comentario aquí que entró de acá. Uh, Caro, gracias Luis, muy buena entrevista. Muchas Ajá. gracias por tu comentario, Caro. Muy buen trabajo como productora en la película. Eh, muchas gracias a todos los que han sintonizado. Y que tengan una. Nos vemos en el cine, ojalá, muy, en, un, en un lugar muy. Pronto, muy, pronto. Muy Vamos, muy pronto. chao. Chao, buenas noches, Luis, gracias. Chao. chao.